we'll pass it uh, whatever's at the index in the image now. Oh my gosh, literally in the middle. Oh, that's our fire alarm. <laughs> How's it going guys? Sorry for not uploading the past couple weeks. I've actually been pretty busy and then on top of that I was actually out of town as well so I couldn't really upload anyways. Um, so I figured kind of to get back into it this would be a good problem to do. It's called flood fill. It has to do with graphs so that's a good problem to start with. Also, to catch you guys up, I was talking to Hamza yesterday. Hamza has a Facebook on-site interview tomorrow, so good luck, Hamza. And if you guys have anything I can help you with, interview-related or not, be sure to drop a comment, let me know. We could find the time to connect, and hopefully I can help you guys. So let's jump right into it. Floodfill says an image is represented by a 2D array of integers, each integer representing the pixel value of the image. So given a coordinate SR, which is source row, and SC, source column, representing the starting pixel row and column of the flood fill and a new pixel value, new color, flood fill the image. To perform a flood fill, consider the starting pixel plus any pixels connected four directionally, so just meaning top, bottom, left, and right, to the starting pixel of the same color as the starting pixel plus any pixels connected four directionally to those pixels and so on. Replace the color of all the aforementioned pixels in the new color. At the end, return the modified image. I don't really love that description. I'm going to give you guys a simpler, easier to digest description, I think. Also, looking at these examples aren't really great just because they're not, they're not formed like a matrix. It's just a bunch of rows of arrays. Uh, but all it's saying is if you've ever done anything like Microsoft Paint or any kind of like editing software, if there's a picture in front of us and I select red and then I click on a blue pixel, we're gonna change that starting pixel as well as any other uh, pixel that matches that starting pixel's color to red. So it's basically like a fill uh, tool in Microsoft Paint. And that's actually kind of why I like this problem too because it may helps you like understand how those tools work. So again, it's like clicking a bucket tool in an editing software, selecting a color and then clicking on some other pixel and it'll flood fill every color that has that initial starting color to the color that you selected. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's get into the problem now. So probably the easiest thing to do is, is let's just check if we actually have any work to do, right? So to check if we have any work to do, we could just check if the new color that we're asking for, if that equals the starting point of the click, there's no work to be done, right? So in other words, if image SR SC is equal to new color, then we could just return our image. Done, simple enough. If that's not the case, this is where the problem is a little bit more interesting, right? So if the color is not the same as when we first click, we need to change every color, uh, including the starting color and every pixel around it to the new color we want. So I think it's easiest to just do this recursively. This is pretty much just like a standard DFS. So we can make a recursive function called fill. It'll take the image, the starting row, the starting column, the color that we're clicking on to begin with. So image SRSC, and then the new color that we're asking to change everything to. So once a recursive function returns, all we should have to do is return our modified image. So now let's make our recursive function. This is just gonna change the image itself, so it's gonna be void. We called it fill, and it's gonna take a 2D integer array called image. What's up? Are they done? We're getting there. All right, thank you. It's literally just potatoes, so they're not. Potato lagos. Oh, that's Oh, hot. I made a movie. You're in the video. <laughs> oh. Now, that's the second interruption. Neil, that's my roommate, he set off the fire alarm like three minutes ago when I was recording this. Anyways. Wow, that is really hot. Sorry, guys. Totally unexpected. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> now that I've had my potato latka. Let's continue. So it's going to take, uh, we said, a 2D integer array called image. We're going to take SR and SC, which is the uh, row and column, right? So we'll just call them I and J. So in I, in J. And then we're going to take our new color, right? Or sorry, the color that we're clicking on initially. So we'll call this int color. And then we're also taking a new color. So we'll call this int new color. So now. We need to check two things, right? One, we need to check, are we still inside the bounds of our image? That's one, so that will be part of our base case. And the second part of our base case will just be, if the pixel we're trying to evaluate now, wherever we are in this image, let's say we're here, is that image, does that have, image have the same starting color 
same color as the, the starting pixels, right? Let's say the color, sorry, the pixel we clicked on initially was here. If this pixel over here that we've now traveled to has the same color as the starting pixel, then we need to change its color. So that will be part of our base case. So if it's not part of it, or if it's not the same color, we don't need to do anything, so we can return. So if i is less than zero, or i is greater than or equal to image.length, uh, which will take care of top and bottom bounds, or j is less than zero, or j is greater than or equal to image i.length, which will take care of left and right bounds, or image i j is not equal to color, then we can just return not return our image, but just return because our function is void. So now if we get past this base case, right, this is our base case, if we get past it, now we need to, well, we need to change the color of the current pixel, so that's easy enough. So we'll say image of ij is equal to our new color. And then the only thing we have to do now is actually continue to traverse all the pixels around the pixel that we're on, which makes it our DFS essentially. So we will call fill again with image i plus one j color new color. Uh, so that will move down one. And we'll say fill image i minus one j color new color. That will move up one. Fill again image i j plus one color new color. And that will move to the right one. And now we'll say finally image i j minus one color new color. And that will move to the left one. So now hopefully once this initial call returns, right, that will make some call on the initial pixel. And then we'll start traversing every pixel around it. And by the time this top level call returns, all we have to do is return our image. And now the image should reflect uh, the change that we made, which again was changing a color from like red to blue or something of that nature. So let's see if this works. Awesome, and it looks like it does here. So that is how to do the problem flood fill in Java. I hope this was helpful guys. If it was, do me a favor, leave me a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys. Freedom of jail, clips inserted, a baby's being born, same time a man is murdered, the beginning and end. As far as rap go, it's only natural, I explain my plateau, and also what defines my name. First it was nasty, but times have changed, ask me now, I'm 